welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and holy moly, there's a new set out there. Murders at Karlov Manor. And one of the cards that has dropped and absolutely shaken everything to its foundation is Anzrag, the Quake Mole. Two, a red and a green for a legendary creature, Mole God Mythic. It's an 8-4. And when Anzrag becomes blocked, untap each creature you control. After this phase, there is an additional combat phase. Then, for the low, totally reasonable, non-commander price of three red, red, green, green, Anzrag must be blocked each combat this turn, if able. But DDB, why would you play the red green when the red by itself is totally busted? No questions. But this card is sweet, and that probably has a lot to do with it. So the trick here is we want our opponent's life total to be in such jeopardy that they have to block. If they do not block, then you know, they're gonna die because their life total is low. But if they do block, we untap the Quake Mole and we swing until they are actually dead. Because each time they block this, you untap all your creatures and attack. The biggest trick that the Quake Mole can pull is by becoming indestructible. It's not about giving the Quake Mole trample. I know, it's got eight power. I know, you want things to have trample when they have eight power, I get it. But what's even better than that is if this is indestructible because they block it with a creature that will trade with it or they multi-block it to try to kill it, you make it indestructible. And now the Quake Mole will go through all of their creatures one by however many they dare block with until they're all gone and then swing it in for lethal. So abilities that we want to give to our Quake Mole, big number one, haste. Reckless Storm Seeker gives haste. Haste so that it gets right to work. That's huge. Number two, indestructible. And that's Hajar, loyal bodyguard. That's Tyvar stand coming in. Now I know I said no questions, but we are trying out a new card called hard hitting question. For one green, this is a bite spell. One green sorcery. This is the cheapest bite I think we've actually seen. And by bite, I mean we deal our damage to target creature. It does not deal its damage back to the creature like a prey upon fight would have happened. So is it removal? Kind of. It also dictates the fact that we run Tyvar Stand and Hard Hitting Question. That's why we run Jewel Thief, because when Jewel Thief comes out, you make a treasure. And if you can double spell on the play or on the draw on turn three by both getting a body on the board and removing something or making that body indestructible, that can help turn the tide against those pesky aggressive decks that are everywhere. Two more new cards to talk about, because this archetype actually did get a lot of good weapons. Sharp Eyed Rookie is one in a green, or a human detective at rare, Vigilance 2-2. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, if its power is greater than Sharp-Eyed Rookie's power or its toughness is greater than Sharp-Eyed Rookie's toughness, put a plus one plus one counter on the rookie and investigate. It's a little card advantage engine and it also evolves. And as you can see, we have many creatures with higher power and toughness than the rookie. So hopefully this can become a real threat. The other card that we're playing with here is Breakout. Breakout is a red green for a wall of text, but it's interesting. Look at the top six of your library. You may reveal a creature card from among them. If that card has mana value two or less, you may put it onto the battlefield and it gains haste. This is a great way to make sure that we're hitting Hajar, Loyal Bodyguard, as often as possible, and sometimes Sharp-Eyed Rookie. Now, if uh, you didn't re put the re let me try that again. If you didn't put the revealed card onto the battlefield this way, meaning it's a creature with mana value greater than two, put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom in a random order. So we're casting Breakout on two. We're either getting Hajar in there with haste, which is awesome. Or we're getting a card like a Reckless Storm Seeker ready to power up our Quake Mole. Maybe we're getting a Quake Mole and putting it in our hand for later. We're adding a little bit of consistency to what can be an inconsistent curve. And we're making sure that we do the holy moly as much as we possibly can. It's great to have new cards in standard. And if you want to get new cards for your paper collection, go to coolstuffinc.com, use the promo code CGB5, and that will get you a discount over there. Then when you get your cards, protect them with Ultimate Guard. It is the only company whose sleeves I use. Cortex and Katanas, bring them on. Black and purple, those are my colors for paper standard. Oh, and a little bit of, you know, blue. So please support the sponsors of the channel. Now let's dive in 
Let the quake mole nonsense begin. Coming message from CGB HQ. You play that. Yes. We have the Covert Go Blue Dinosaur Rider playmat. You can get this sweet playmat and the sweet new token as well in a bundle at coolstuffinc.com slash CGB. That's Covert Go Blue HQ. Coolstuffinc.com slash CGB. Get yours today for the easy price of $19.99. I'm a play nice. One land, not so nice. Okay. We'll keep this one, two, three curve and hope we draw a land and a mole god to top it off. Mono red, maybe? Sure seems like it. That's a good draw. So we don't have to take pain. Let's see if they can handle the aggro of Gruul on the play. And they're gonna go straight to a lightning strike on Hajar. Okay, that's one less lightning strike in their hand. And they're still taking more damage than they're giving. We love that. I wonder if I play the rookie. Nope. Let's grow the adaptive while we can and just push more damage. Value me really wants to investigate. <laughs> Way too much. Sure. Opponent choosing to stay aggressive despite, you know, what's happening on the board. <laughs> but we draw Jewel Thief, which can also play the rookie. And swings in for a huge chunk of damage. And guess what? They've got to do 14 to us. Now they do have a Godric. They can get it into the sky with two permanents. Okay, they made him fly and now they're holding back, but at three health, they can't survive, right? They can block here, block here, still take four. Nope. Mono red, we're too fast for you. On the play, turn one adaptive, turn two nothing, but possibly turn three storm seeker quake mole. We are here to mole god, this hand might do it. So we keep this hand. It's a simple equation. We came to holy moly, and holy moly, we shall. Or I'll delete this video. <laughs> That's how YouTube works. I haven't played mono red in exactly two minutes. And that was just because I had to pee. So come on, you toilet gamer. Make your play. Found the line. Kill the creature on the board. Brilliant. All right. Might be a sign that they don't have another land. Kimono deployed. So their turn one could have been Kimono, but they chose play with fire. It's a lot of respect for Evolving Adaptive. It's the opposite of what our last opponent did. All right, do we play the Storm Seeker? Or do we play the 4-4 Maze Crusher that they can't Lightning Strike and try to save the Storm Seeker for protection with Tyvar's Stand? I'm going 4-4. Stats matter against the red deck. So let's put up some stats. Hopefully we draw a land so that we can hold up the stand soon. I'd also take a Jewel Thief. That would help with that too. Inti. On a red trying new cards. Inti shouldn't be in this deck. There are other decks that you can play Inti in. This ain't, this is not it. All right. Well, we're going to hold up the stand. And let's start bringing the pain. The opponent's probably going to try to Monstrous Rage or Lightning Strike their way through the Hajar, so hopefully we catch them. Okay, not attacking with Phoenix Chick is a choice you can make. They want to have a 4-4 Inti, okay? 
and if they had, they'd be able to cast that Witch Stalker Frenzy. Interesting. Blazing Crescendo, sure. I mean, it hurts. There's a Furnace Rains right there, but they don't have the land for it. The Furnace Rains does imply, though, that we should hold up the stand. I will just send you to make sure that we survive this turn. We're at 10, so we've got to be able to block in T. And if we untap, Quake Mole. This time the Phoenix Chick attacks. <laughs> Big brain. Ooh, it's a sorcery though, burned together. It's a fling sorcery. All right, gotta kill this Inti then. We need them to assign the order of the blockers so we make the creature indestructible. That is the first to receive the damage. Huh. Okay, they're trying to take out Hajar. Well, I will fight for Hajar. If they lightning strike in response, we sack Hajar, we grow McLaws, and it's still big enough to kill NT because of the plus one plus O that Hajar gives it. They go for Crescendo on the chick. Man, they really need to hit a land here. But if they do, that's not it. It's not over. It's going to be 4-8. We got to end the game on our turn, though. I think we can do that. Because if they don't block this... They gonna die. So what's the play? And if they do block this, by the way, they're still gonna die. <laughs> I just wanna see it one time. I wanna see Mono Red be like, I chump block. Um, target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to any other target than sacrifice. They're trying to kill here. All right, play this. Pack for nine. 10, 11. 11 plus three is 14. It'll be enough. We could sack the Hajar though, just to be sure. So let's do it. Smooth. Give it to him. And then Mono Red was destroyed by the Holy Moly. No fling could compare. On the play, love that. Rookie into question mark into Quake Mole. It's not a great curve, but just top deck a few of the right cards and it is on the play and we should be able to give the opponent a hard time. Seed core. Toxic? Toxic deck? I'll show you toxic. Poison. <laughs> oh, the adaptive. You were supposed to be a turn sooner, but we just, hmm. Hmm. The rookie can make it grow. We play a turn off curve, but we grow our adaptive. Okay. I like this. We'll do this. The question's not going to be a good card. Like, but if we do this now, at least we get the Skrelv off the board and we blow up their curve. If we wait, it's not like we're going to catch them later with their Skrelv not open. They're probably going to hold it up for the rest of the game. Ah, did they have to? They had to have another one. Okay, well, fine. Rookie. Start the pain. This is where Sharp Eye Rookie's Vigilance could come in super handy. Against the Toxic deck, you always want to have blockers for those little poisonous buggers.
My goodness, the Phyrexian mana base is strong. It can run five color Phyrexia. The Singer, okay. So now this gets plus one, plus one, and yeah, that's, that's what this is, okay. Well, stand, gotta make a stand. Can't be, can't be bullied. Can't be bullied by toxic gamers. You have to make a stand. Kind of like a one mana removal spell in the spot. So quake mole them. <laughs> because the rookie evolves kind of, we investigate, we keep the pressure on. We have enough power on the board to make them block next turn, but if they block the Quake Mole... What kind of removal spell could they have without colored mana? Their, their mana colors are only available to cast Phyrexians. <laughs> we found our answer! It was a hard-hitting question. On the draw, bad. Curve no one drop, also not great, but it's just enough to make me keep it. With the double rookies, the crusher, the storm seeker. Our opponent giving me all the impression of blue eye control, but what is this? Exot from the graveyard, discover five as a sorcery. It's like ramp, weird. I feel like I've never seen that card. Speaking of cards you've never seen, <laughs> rookie in the house. I wonder if we have enough humans to name human on a cavern of souls if we see more blue-white control decks. Give it a try. Lame. I just wanted to investigate. The next turn we have a pretty good turn. Rookie into Hajar, double investigate. And then they'll play a temporary lockdown or a farewell and we'll regret everything. But you know, here we are. What's this card do? Attack it to destroy a land and you make a treasure. Weird. I don't know why you'd play that instead of Field of Ruin or Demolition Field, but they might show me some cave synergy. Anyway. Double investigate feels good. Maybe we can actually grind it out against them. Just don't lock me down. No temporary lockdown, please. Yeah, Sunfall's annoying, but we get to keep our clues. Mmm. Mmm. All right. Let's try to set us up for success with this card so we can protect it. Let's draw with the clue. And let's play the Loyal Bodyguard. Unfortunately, because of the way I failed to tap well, we don't have stand up, but I think that's okay. I think we'd let this die to a removal anyway. Because then we'd have potentially a pro protected Quake Mole. What the heck? Too strong! Holy crap! That's huge! And braided net to tap stuff? Lame. Alright. Well, what is it? Three? Remove three oil counters? No! We needed one more mana. Well, fear not. Prepare to unleash the indestructible Quake Mole. It, I mean, if, if this card is that good, here we go. The braided net's going to be a problem, but here we are trying to make it work. I 
If they do flip this, they don't have the net. Are you running without a net? They sure are. Six mana. Interesting. Very interesting. So now, when you cast an artifact or creature spell, you make another gnome soldier. Oh, I really need one more land. All right, give them the business. How hard do we need to hit them? I guess for one more. Gotta try to break through. We've got them down to very, like they've got some resources, no doubt, but we've got them low. We've got tricks. Let's see what we can do. That braided net's gonna be annoying. They need that top deck to be good. Its activate abilities can't be activated for as long as it remains tapped. Do we just sack it in response? What is that? I want to destroy something, it feels like. I mean, I've got another one. The fact that they use the net there, I think we gotta go for this. They discover, they get a jewel. I mean, I, I don't like having discover five in your deck with like one mana do nothing when it enters the battlefield cards. That's, um, that's kind of cringe. Not gonna lie. It's very cringe. Scoop them up. They can't stop the mole. I don't know why they scooped it, actually. They could block, block. I guess if I get two attacks after giving this um, menace. Yeah. If I get, I have, they have to block this, which means I get two attacks with this. If I give this menace, they're dead. Got it. Keep molin, 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 molin. Keep molin, 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 molin. Gotta keep molin, 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 molin. Uh, hey, it's Breakout. Starting to think that card wasn't actually in my deck. On the draw, turn two, Breakout, hopefully into a good creature. Into turn three, Jewel Thief, hard hitting question on the draw. Yeah, we'll try it. Oh, well, there's a jar right there. Maybe we don't break out. We have the play we want. Let's just make it. Breakout can be later in the game when we know maybe something different that we need. I don't know. Voider end. <laughs> Bang. Somebody doesn't like that card. So. I think we sneak out the storm seeker because if we start the day night, we might have this on nighttime late later. Like if we find another storm seeker, I think that's good. Looks like we're up against a control deck using Murex for black mana. They have tapped black mana. Okay. Oh, we transformed. Man, what I give for a Tyvar stand right here. Jewel Thief. Treasure up. Pump it. Louder. Bring it. Down to nine. Ouchie. Let's break out. Let's grab a Maze Crusher for later. Or do we grab a Hajar? Okay, you may reveal a creature card from among them. If that card is two or less, put it onto the battlefield and it gains haste. If you didn't put a reveal card on the battlefield this way. Okay, so I'll have to put it on the battlefield if I reveal it here. But So let's take the Maze Crusher, because <laughs> the whole point is I don't want it to die to a sweeper. But may I, I'm starting to think like I was supposed to break out pre-combat. That could have been a 3-3 three, three haste. That would have been awesome. 
until the sweeper. <laughs> like Sunfall is mean. Voidren. Okay, having regrets. Let's give him the ridge line. Mindful of sweeper, we reduce opponent's life total to one. One sneaky, vigilant, trampoly cat rogue is threatening lethal. Pass. Ooh. Maze Crusher. Resolves. So Kinzen. Didn't have a way out of that. Voidrend will not save you. On the play. Well, our first creature is the rookie. We have to draw land or this hand is bad. But if we draw two out of three cards as land, we like do it. We do the thing. So we have to try. We'll give him some mono red vibes. There's one land. We're doing it. Here's the rookie. Uh, funny corn out of Jeskai mana base. I mean, we could go after that bunny corn right now. I think we just try to be aggressive, but I might regret this. There's no question. You do not put bunny corn in a deck unless you can make a lot of permanence. I might regret not killing this bunny corn right now. Like, what if it's bigger than my quake mall? Referee Squad. Convoke Vigilance, enters the battlefield, tap target creature, and stun it. Okay. Well, bad news. We didn't get the land for the Quake Mole. That's the bad news. We do have another Storm Seeker. We can also break out and ask a hard hitting question. I think that's the line. And the hit is another rookie, it appears. Let's go with the rookie. I think we just kill the squad so we can hit for five instead of having them block the rookie. Oh, that's gutsy. That's gutsy. The, no respect for a bunny corn. You know, they missed their land drop. No respect for that bunny. None. Uh, do you need lands for your deck to work or something? Why is this so hard? Boom, diamond, tier one. Okay, can we pick up a game on the draw? That's always, that's the hard part of best of one. This is probably as good as it gets on the draw, uh, unless we had like a one drop, because we've got stats. We've got a lot of stats coming at them. The bodyguard, the crasher, it's like three, three, four, four. Or we could play jewel thief and have stand up. And the opponent's gonna rip our hand to pieces with a bat. Great, that's that's great. I'm, I'm so happy. I hope they take the Hajar and I hope I rip a new uh, two drop. We have 11 more in the deck. An adaptive would be nice too. Yeah, they, they, they say screw your curve, we hate. Yep, that, that's, that's so Magic the Gathering right there. Yep, into a preacher. Cool, 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 cool. All right, let's uh, get the stand protection ready. But we plan to save it for the mole, don't tell him. Okay, fine, it's a little too good. Can't just lose all of our tempo right now. They want the card that bad? Okay. Indestructible. They don't know about the second stand. That could be important. Okay. What to do? What to do? 
we break out into another Hajar, then we have protection for the mole next turn, but we don't have haste for it. We play McLaws. Can go toe to toe with the Dread Knight and the Preacher. This is tough. This is tough. Play the Quake Mole, it probably just dies. Let's go with McLaws. Poor Jewel Thief, why can't you be a 3 4 in a moment like this? Where battling specifically Dread Knight is such, so hard for us. seems planted against me specifically I I take offense cool that's cool feel great about that that nice curve out it's pretty good pretty good on the play rookie rookie jewel thief love it The humans are coming. Okay. Real talk. Thalia is a pain. We could break out before Thalia comes down. Possibly have a 3-3 haste. Might also whiff. Or we can have what I would call more of the sure thing with the rookie. I think we go rookie. I'm not going to live in fear of Thalia. Next turn, Jewel Thief. Investigate. Next turn, Quake Mole. Investigate. I'll be stocked with power. Real power. They held back. They held back. And I drew Stormseeker. Okay, I'll hold back too. I'll hold back too. I'll wait for the holy moly. Convenient. The rookie? They're scared of the rookie. I love that. I love seeing them cower in fear. New card. Terrifying. Say hello to my little friend. I attack with this. They can't really block it well. Let's go. Casual 11. Okay. They better have second brew of Cathar. They always do. They always have it, right? They always have the second brew of Cathar, right? Where is it? Where is the other brutal Cathar? Well, congratulations. Your hands on the battle. Give them a cookie. Another storm seeker. Does that force them to block Quake Mole? We can get this up to 10. And get this up to 10. Let's see if we can find the bodyguard. We can't. Ooh, that burns. I was queued up. I was ready to sing, I will always love you. It was gonna be real. All right. Nine. I guess we have to play this. Yeah, attacking won't help me enough. Now, if I play this and we're blocking here, 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 we take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're not dead. So, vigilance. Maybe they'll block. Three power is their biggest creature, so them blocking with a three is as good as anything else. And we get some damage in, which makes it more likely that the Holy Moly does its thing. It's like we block, but we dealt damage. Veteran. Okay, it's not too scary. Land off the top, we can, mor we can force them to block. Are you scrolling? Uh -huh. 
down to six. Okay. Well, we can play a Stormseeker and then they have to block or we can activate this. It must be blocked, but then they just block it with enough to kill it, right? If we had the way to give it indestructible, if we had found Hajar, we'd be rolling. We'd be rolling and molin'. Let's draw. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's indestructibility. Ugh. Hello? Okay. It has to be... This is a treasure? This is a treasure. So, one has to go here because it has to be enough to threaten to kill. Is this it? Did we do the thing? It might just not block. Oh, you you're not you're not just chump blocking my mole god, are you? That's not how that works. <laughs> Indestructible. Now how does this work? Untap. We go again. You better block, or are you gonna die? But when they block, untap, go again, until they're all out of humans. Why not? Let's go! Want to try again? I got time. Ah. The writing was on the wall and it said, holy moly. Today's Cool Kids Club member shout out goes to Hat McCoy. Hat, thank you for joining the Cool Kids Club on YouTube. Hit that join button below if you want to get access to my videos a day early, as well as exclusive members only live streams like some of the members are watching right now. Hat, you're cool. And what can we say? We are back for the post game wraps on holy moly, I can't believe it. This version, this build, because I did work on it, the overall numbers since I started playing with the Mole God are 11 and 6, but this version is 7 and 2, and 100% on the play. And I can't believe it, because I would have written this card off as a commander card. Ansrag the Quake Mole is actually putting in work and giving me hope that there is something new in this format to be enjoyed. And it is one of the more exciting cards, for sure, in the format. So by all means, guys, get out there and get your Quake Mole on if you've got a few Mythics. Now, maybe you don't have a few Mythics, or maybe you have like 20 Mythics, but you're so paralyzed with the paradox of choice, you're so scared to spend them, that you just, you know, you just one more day playing Mono Red. One more day. One more day playing Mono Red. And then, then I'll have the courage to craft a really cool different deck so I'm not just part of the problem spamming Mono Red it every day. One more day of Mono Red and then I'll build a real deck. One more day. Stop it. Cut it out. Get some help. And make that help. Anzrag the Quake Mole. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. Like, subscribe. You're cool.